Hello, in this presentation, we will record transactions related to accounts receivable, recording the transactions using the double entry accounting system in the format of the accounting equation, that equation of assets equal liabilities plus equity. Objectives. At the end of this, we will be able to list transactions involving accounts receivable and record transactions involving accounts receivable using the accounting equation. We will go through some examples of the accounting equation and recording transactions related to accounts receivable. Quick review of the accounting equation. We have assets equal liabilities plus equity as the accounting equation. We then need to start memorizing those accounts that fit into those subcategories of assets, liabilities, and equity. Those being in terms of assets for this problem, cash, accounts receivable, supplies, all assets. We focus in here on accounts receivable, looking at that accounts receivable cycle, and therefore, these transactions will basically be selling something on account and then receiving payment at a later time. In terms of liabilities, we just have the accounts payable and within the equity section, remember that we have the capital account and the entire income statement, which includes revenue and expenses. If this were a corporation rather than a sole proprietor, this capital account would be something like common stock retained earnings and we would still have revenue and expenses, meaning the entire income statement is part of the equity section. Then we're going to see that total assets, of course, will equal total liabilities. And we can look at the impact on net income, meaning the impact on revenue minus expenses. First transaction, we're going to say that we performed work on account, no cash received. Now, typically, when we first start looking at the recording of these transactions, we're not going to be looking at a company that sells stuff where you have a service company so therefore we're going to be a law firm or a bookkeeping firm and we've done work you can imagine work being done and us basically invoicing the client that will be the typical flow of many types of industries so those types of industries where we do work and then invoice the client would be this type of transaction what happens then is we invoice the client and the client basically has an iou at this point in time nothing tangible has taken place other than possibly an invoice going from us to the client but no money has taken place uh, the services have been completed so at that point in time then we haven't received cash but we have got something we've got this iou and that of course will be the accounts receivable item here so we're going to say the receivable is going up due to the fact that we are owed money then we need to know what the other side of the transaction will be. Why will people be paying us money, this 10000 sometime in the future? Because we have earned it. And the act of earning is under the revenue recognition principle, the time and the point at which we recognize revenue. Revenue over here on the equity side. So we have revenue on the equity side. We know if that receivable went up, then the revenue too must be going up. So I'm going to increase revenue on this side as well if we also want to think through that however and say well revenue revenue only really goes up meaning if this is a customer uh, that we never really pay customers money never really goes the other way to us paying customers it only goes this way the customer is going to pay us we do work for customers and therefore the in, the revenue is going to only increase it also it has to increase because it's going to increase the amount of total equity so we can kind of double check ourselves in terms of the accounting equation, knowing that this will increase and in terms of just looking at that account, analyzing that account and seeing that it increases in that format as well. Also note that some people uh, don't like the idea of recording revenue and uh, an asset before we receive cash, thinking that uh, we're kind of recording something before we have earned it. But realize that uh, we are re receiving something here, meaning this receivable has value in that we believe we're going to get paid within 30 to 60 days. And therefore, if we went to a bank and we were giving someone a bank loan, this is important information. The bank needs to know the money that we are going to receive. That's important information to decision making as to whether a loan will be given. Now, if this loan is not likely to, if, if we have accounts receivable here and it's not likely to be paid, then we're going to have to deal we're going to have to tell our readers of the financial statements that in some way we will deal with that at a future point that is something that is a concern that we have to deal with but note that this is a receivable that's not as valuable as cash and that there's more risk involved to it 
but it still is a receivable just as putting money into a stock market isn't as solid as having the cash although there's better uh, uh, ability for gain that's why you put it there but it's, it's not as guaranteed as cash but we still are going to record it hoping uh, you know that there is a likelihood that we will receive it and it is therefore an asset the revenue we're going to record at the point in time that we have earned it whether we have received payment or not we see the transaction here then we're going to have accounts receivable increasing and we're going to have assets therefore going up and we see that the revenue is increasing that will increase the equity no effect on the liability section therefore the total assets of this transactions including just the accounts receivable is equal to the liabilities plus equity we also note that net income is going up at this point in time that happening because revenue went up and revenue minus expenses means that net income is going up by that 10,000. Next piece, we're going to say that we received cash on account for work done in the past. Now, remember when we work with these transactions, we're going to have to look at the beginning balance. So now we have something happened prior to this, meaning we have this prior balance here, which, which just includes the prior transaction. We're going to record the current transaction, and then we will have the total transaction we're gonna have to add those two up so when we look at this transaction we're gonna ask our question is cash affected and we're gonna say yeah uh, we received cash received cash that's always gonna be the key word typically a problem in a book problem will say something like that that we received it in real life obviously it would be obvious we would receive a check in the mail or something like that in a book problem we would have to read that and interpret it Note also that we see we may see something like on account, which typically makes us think accounts receivable or accounts payable. And it may, may you th make you think, like it does too many, that cash isn't involved. Because typically when we see accounts on account, it means that we're possibly receiving payment without cash. Note that this is the second transaction, however. So if we were to buy, if we were to do work on account, no cash happened. We did work as we did in the prior transaction and we had not yet received cash. But if we receive cash on account, that's the second half of the transaction. That means both cash and the accounts receivable in this case will be affected. So if we go through our questions and ask, is cash affected? That's usually the best way to start. And we're just gonna, yeah, cash is affected. We received it. Therefore, we're gonna say cash is gonna increase. And then we just need to see what the other side of the transaction is. We see that we are, are getting 10,000 from the client and therefore might believe that that should be revenue. But looking at the prior transaction, revenue had already been recorded. And the reason is because of course, we did the work in the past. We're not doing the work at this point in time. We are just receiving the payment at this point in time. Therefore, the other account affected is receivable. The amount showing that people owe us money. People owe us 10,000. They're not gonna owe us 10,000 after they pay us 10,000 and therefore this receivable must be the other side going down. So if we're to look at the transaction, it would look like this. We're gonna say cash is gonna increase. Receivable then is gonna decrease. So the asset then is going up and down. We have an asset going up, asset going down, no effect on liabilities or equity. So this is one of those transactions which is a bit confusing in terms of the accounting equation because there's no net effect on the total assets or the liabilities and equity sides no effect therefore on income because one asset is going up and one asset is going down in essence we got a better asset and we lost the worser asset here we lost people owing us money people no longer owe us money because they paid us the money remember what the receivable account is doing is just tracking it's just tracking who owes us money then we we're going to calculate the balance here and we're just going to bring the balances down so we're just saying this is our prior balance, this is the current activity, this is our total. Prior balance was zero, 10,000 increase in cash, total is 10,000. Prior balance in accounts receivable is 10,000. We decreased at 10,000, current balance is zero. No other activity in any of the other accounts. And of course, we are back in balance, total assets equaling total liabilities plus equity. Note that this is just the normal transactions that's going to happen. If we went on and on with the accounts receivable, if we were working in the accounts receivable department, it should always look like this. We're going to say receivable is going to go up and then receivable is going to be paid and then receivable is going to go up and paid. It may not be right next to each other in time, meaning 
we might have multiple receivables <laughs> between this 10,000 and then payment might happen way down here somewhere. But typically, hopefully, we're going to have work done, receivables increasing, and then of course the, the payments being received, receivables then de decreasing at the time of payment. Objectives. We are now able to list transactions involving accounts receivable and record transactions involving accounts receivable using the accounting equation.